have you ever taken a break for yourself to see if you were doing okay or noticed your loved ones be it your family or friends upset or stressed about something and didn't know how to help them well you're at the right place hello and welcome to microfiles a podcast brought to you by the microbiological society from the department of microbiology st joseph's college autonomous bengaluru this podcast series features experts and research scholars from the field of microbiology and other disciplines of science i am amanda taffy your host for this episode and joining me we have dr sharmishta gupta clinical psychologist psychotherapist and life coach who will share her expertise on mental health ma'am welcome to the podcast thank you so much amanda to begin with i had come across your article titled let's not stigmatize mental health which was published in the hitwada e paper on world mental health day could you brief us about what was the driving force that made you come into this field and give our audience a gist about your article uh thank you so much amanda for inviting me for the podcast uh, organized by st joseph's convent bengaluru uh the most important thing to begin with uh, let me put it being a psychologist for the last 30 years uh, the journey that i have dealt i felt that it is very important to make people aware of the fact that how important mental health is uh, and uh, why aren't we vocal about it why don't we talk about it why don't we express about it and uh, the most important thing therefore wherever and whenever and with whomsoever i get an opportunity to communicate i always talk about mental health because still in india mental health is taken as a stigma not to not to express our emotions that Uh, freely and openly and it is not being embraced so positively in our society therefore uh, being uh, october 10th is the world mental health day which is being celebrated globally globally around the globe uh, i felt that uh, every year probably i write an art- uh, article on that day but not only on that day for me 365 days are very important so far as mental health is concerned and in my article i have just made uh, an attempt to create an awareness about mental health and not to stick with the stigma because like physical health mental health is also very important and it needs to be acknowledged recognized embraced gracefully and with full dignity uh that is what in my article i guess uh, the article is uh, i tried to frame it beautifully and in a very simple language so that even a layman could understand that whenever you feel low whenever you feel depressed whenever you feel stressed out you need to be expressive at least you need to have somebody around you so that you could uh, talk about it and there should not be any kind of inhibition in Uh, opening about your heart and soul before the people so this is all uh, the gist of the article let not uh, make mental health a stigma and we should not stick with the stigma we should like physical health mental health should also be given a, a more emphasis more preferences and it should be recognized and wholeheartedly it should be embraced Yes ma'am very true like the article was very enlightening and to all the listeners you can head up to our description to avail the link for the whole article you should all give it a read so ma'am like you said like mental health is a stigma has always been a stigma but like what was your driving force to enter this field to come in this field at that time like how did your journey start in this field uh amanda as i have rightly said that uh, uh, mental health is very important but at the same time uh, when i was a student of psychology when i was doing my ug and pg i was very much uh, let me put it very honestly i should open up my heart and soul how 
I came into this field and what urge and drive made me to become a part of this uh, career and profession is that honestly speaking, let me put it because many youngsters and students will be joining this platform. Uh, people of all age group, all gender around the globe should uh, listen to it because let me put it, I was a very introvert girl. Uh, I have done my schooling from St. Joseph's Convent, Bhopal, and a very introvert girl, but always a topper in the class. Uh, it always made me so scary and so frightened whenever my name was called on the stage to receive an award or a prize or a recognition or a validation. It made me uh, shiver like anything from head to toe. I used to shiver only because of the fact I did not like to be in the limelight. That was the time when I realized that how important it is to understand one's weakness that we never talk about. Okay, uh, it is good to have uh, strength, the potential, the skills as everybody has. But remember one thing, nobody is perfect. And with those imperfections, I learned how to nurture myself, how to improvise myself and how to understand with the tag when I uh, started uh, graduating, I understood that I was a very keen listener and a very, uh, uh, I was a very passionate uh, observer. So being an introvert child, I was used to listen and see, observe, perceive uh, the people around myself. And that was the time I understood that this is the beautiful field where I could see the same human being, same person, smiling, uh, uh, feeling so depressed, different types of emojis. In the current scenario, everybody has a smartphone in hand and we send and we exchange emojis amongst us. But do we try ever try to understand what all emotions we go through, how many emotions in a daytime, in a 24 hours we express amongst ourselves this is the time when i felt that psychology is the only subject which i could relate i could connect and i felt very very uh, connected with myself because i knew that i was a very introvert child that made me realize that it became very difficult to be a part of a society to be i used to have social, social anxiety and therefore today i am in a profession where i have to hold mic always and that is the part and parcel of my life i'm not only a practicing psychologist i'm a soft skill trainer with various public and private sector organizations and this is the thing that every individual needs to acknowledge that what is your strength you need to polish your strength but at the same time you need to understand your weaknesses and you need to work on it so acceptance of one's weakness is the first step of recovery and that was the time i understood that yes i need to work on it and by the grace of almighty uh, i i could reach wherever i wanted to reach but still i I consider myself to be a student of psychology and every person who will come in my life, every situation, every time, like I would say the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic hit the globe, around the globe and hit every person. And trust me, believe me, that was the time when I realized that it is not uh, any particular person, it is not a a particular profession that has been hit every human being has been hit and how we handle those crisis moments how we take care of ourselves and our loved one this is what pandemic had made us aware therefore this is the time uh, in my journey of life i gradually developed i gradually nurtured i gradually evolved myself not with much of assistance not with much of support system only with the theoretical knowledge but when i am into this profession for the last 30 years it made me realize that yes every individual needs to understand and every individual needs to have that confidence to be vocal about mental health and therefore i started with an internship and training program which has hit everybody around the globe people started joining people started understanding themselves in a better way that in psychological term we call self introspection and that had been a biggest success in making a person realize how important mental health is for every person in whatever domain and profession they are and 
that was the biggest uh, i would say um, success that we are getting when i could see people like students professionals uh, joining the sessions and getting a life that they wanted to be and bringing smile in somebody's face uh, is the main motive of my life and in my profession uh, amanda over to you that is really inspiring ma'am the fact that like how you started from where you started and now where you are i'm pretty sure all our listeners are motivated with all those encouraging words that you put forth and the importance of mental health it's like just not to be celebrated on one day world mental health day but something that we need to carry forward and uh, and i feel that our listeners will even equate to the fact that what you said like about being an introvert and now where you are you are doing public speaking and how you have come so it's really motivating for all of us and on that note um, now in recently we have seen celebrities like deepika padukone sports personalities being vocal about their mental health like if you take for instance simone biles a gymnast a four time olympic gold medalist at this olympics she made the headlines for withdrawing from several events because she wanted to focus on her mental health and it was sure that she would get a medal but it wasn't her priority she prioritized her mental health so what do you feel is the reason for people prioritizing and opening about their mental health in the recent times manja here i would like to appreciate uh, uh, the uh, the acknowledgement a person is giving to mental health especially in the celebrities uh, in the sports in celebrities in the bollywood in the hollywood uh, these are the people we look forward we uh, we uh, acknowledge them we gracefully uh, treat them as a role model and when we hear something so inspiring from such celebrities it makes us believe and it makes us sense ourselves that how important see more than getting she was very sure that she would uh, receive a gold medal and that was not very difficult for her but uh, on the contrary she prioritized her mental health and she knew that in spite of getting uh, uh, achieving a gold medal for the country but her uh, life her mental health her uh, mental situation was most important and she gave much prioritized to her mental health and when people like like the pickup other one she uh, openly expressed how she had gone through depression and how she came out of depression that is the time therefore i always tell you need to acknowledge your weaknesses very gracefully and everybody has some kind of weaknesses but we need to acknowledge it we are scared to talk about the uh, negative part see nobody nobody is perfect in this universe uh, so you have to acknowledge that and you should have the confidence and people should take it positively even i have seen i have a n number of clients visiting me and they are so skeptical they are so uh, so scared in expressing their uh, Uh, emotions before the family because they always think that how family will react to them but when dignitaries and celebrities uh, on the social media on the uh, sports sector on the hollywood bollywood sector when they open up people understand how important it has it is for each and every person because they are the role models for us and we look forward from them and we try to uh, uh, imbibe certain things from them and then we realize that yes that has to be taken care of anything like a physical health yes ma'am the fact that you put forth it's really scary to like open up that to about something that's still not uh, given uh, the importance that it needs to be given mental health so how do you feel like now celebrities have started sports personalities have started opening up but uh, like how do you feel like as if you consider like i'm a, a youngster for me like and a fellow youngsters how it it is difficult like you need uh, when you open up you need someone to hear it to and acknowledge it like you said acknowledgement is very important so how to go about with that what is your opinion about that your views on that thank you amanda amanda very very uh, sensitive and a very important question you have put forward and i would love to uh, answer this question because yes many people who come to me to seek help i have always observed that it is not the person who is seeking help it is the family who is seeking help or nonetheless many a times it so happens that the person want to say something but doesn't have the guts or doesn't have the confidence or doesn't know where they need to talk about who is there to help them about what is the platform uh, 
uh, is there before the person to help out who is the right person to help and who is the right person from where they could seek help therefore let me put it from the grassroots level uh, mental health professionals are the professionals who doesn't deal with like i am a psychologist i deal with only counseling and therapeutic part uh, on the uh, on the contrary we have psychiatrists psychiatrist also who deal with the medicinal part okay so as a layman uh, even we call ourselves educated people but at the time of crisis at the time of uh, when we want to talk about something we do not know who is the right person to uh, to go ahead with and who would be the right platform who is going to help us with so uh, let me put it briefly that it is the psychiatrists who are the men medical professional who give or uh, who help the person only with the medicines but we psychologists are always required to treat uh, and help the person through therapeutic uh, um, uh, therapies and counseling sessions so here i would like to put forward uh, always when you are feeling low see anxiety is something which is very common depression is something that is getting very common but uh, even if a person is feeling low is not in a mood to talk it um, makes himself or herself isolated it is the family who notices or it is the friend who notices and uh, uh, the most important thing is to uh, give a support system just be around such person who is not able to be vocal about his or her feeling but getting himself or herself isolated from the family group society whatsoever uh, during the covid we have been talking about uh, isolation okay uh, so but but remember one thing uh, when a person is going through isolation uh, that is the time where he, you have to be very alert and it is a warning signal it is a trigger that there is something wrong with uh, we talk about social distancing in covid but uh, when a person is going through self isolation that is the trigger signal that is an alarming signal that one has to acknowledge realize accept that uh, he will he or she the person who is going through will never ever try to um, express that he wants to be isolated or she wants to be isolated but the loved ones near to take care of the situation and help the person out of it and if it is possible by the family to take care of the situation brilliant enough but many times it so happened in spite of being the loved ones around the person is not able to express because he is being uh, judged or there would be certain kind of remarks that is not acceptable so i would request every person and it is a very common thing so it, do not feel inhibited do not feel resistant do not feel uh, hesitant in expressing your emotion how slight is silliest thing it might be if i am not feeling uh, good just be open about and say i'm not feeling good i'm not feeling okay it is important to say i am not feeling okay it just just a second of time to acknowledge that but vocal being vocal being uh, expressive is the most important thing to deal with it so uh, i i would uh, i would always request the youngsters or people of all age group who is uh, who would be listening to this session uh, if you find anybody in your personal life professional life or social life dealing from some kind of uh, uh, behavioral disturbances or some kind of behavioral issues and a person is not able to express about it please take care of that person at your own level if it is not sorted out try to seek a professional help and we are there to help you all uh, i am uh, located in nagpur maharashtra but i am dealing with such kind of ailments around the globe through online counseling sessions and i would request please connect but do not make yourself live in a disastrous situation or do not let yourself live with disturbance or anxious moment because that is going to damage you from inside and repair man takes a lot of time so as soon as you take uh, feel that something is wrong please open up and we are there to help trust me my dear friends we are there to help you out only at a distance call is only expected i am touching the people around the globe i'm there 24/7 i'm working my phone is in alert mode trust me we are there to help you out only one phone call distance we are there to rightly said ma'am like it's okay to not be okay and it's very important that we all be vocal about it and 
uh, share whatever we are feeling rather than suppressing it and being uh, quiet about it. Very rightly said. On that note, like, we have a bunch of questions from our audience from our college, uh, St. Joseph's College. And on the uh, whatever you just spoke on that same uh, note, the queries have been coming up. The first one is, how do you keep your mental health in check? How do you stay level-headed when you experience stress? Uh, thank you, Amanda, for the first question. Uh, I would uh, very quickly, because there are, I guess, a number of questions that is going to be shooted up. Uh, so the most important thing, we all go through stress moments. Everybody goes through. There is not a single person in this universe who doesn't um, experience stress. The intensity of stress might vary from time to time, from person to person, from, uh, from uh, intensity of stress. It is, might be different. But we all experience stress to a certain extent. But at the time of crisis, it is the testing time, how we deal with it, how we overcome it, and what would be the coping strategies that are need to be uh, associated with it. So uh, as a layman, um, everybody should understand that stress is something uh, but that has always been taken with a negative connotation. It has never ever spoken in a positive way. But trust me, my dear friends, I am a student of psychology who has done her PhD in stress management and I am a stress management consultant uh, and my PhD topic uh, was on stress management and I take it very positively. So whatever might be the crisis situation, whatever might be the distressing situation, uh, it is a testing time maybe. Uh, but if you take stress positively, you will see a ray of hope there where you could uh, seek some kind of uh, attention, uh, involvement and participation from the people around you who would be there to help you out. And if you feel uh, that that is not a confident and confidential, because we people work in a very confidentiality, we maintain that that is based in our ethics and we follow that very religiously. So. Uh, uh, Please seek help from a professional and try to sort out. And before going to a professional, if you have some loved ones around to you uh, to make you feel uh, in a comfort zone or a, you get a better support system, please seek help. The most important thing over the first question uh, put forward by Amanda is seek help. Seek help to anybody around you. But if you're not satisfied, you're not confident, you do not get the healing process, seek a professional help. Sam, you mentioned about taking stress in a positive way. Could you throw light on that? Yes, absolutely, Amanda. Uh, but seeking, uh, uh, taking uh, stress in a positive way, no book of psychology talks about you, honestly speaking. Uh, so I would like to enhance about uh, uh, the positive side of stress, which is called as eustress. Eustress is something wherein we can take uh, the distress into eustress means taking every crisis moment in a positive way for example for example going to the college for the first time um, maybe uh, they uh, uh, we this year uh, for the last two years consecutively we are connecting online uh, sessions but uh, when you are connected when you got a uh, 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 admission in a college uh, whether the college was of your choice firstly secondly when you connected with the college with lots of uh, hopes desires uh, feelings emotions which colleges said how would it how would it be what kind of courses are being taken care what are the subject who are the faculties what i'm going to get out of it what would be the consequences of getting this course done or getting this curriculum done so these are the kinds of uh, mixed feelings that turn up into you stress. The first salary you get, the first placement you get, the first uh, crush you have in life, the first date you go. These are all very anxious moments, but it is being taken in a positive way. The, the every moment in life, if you try to enjoy it, every bitter moment in life, even if you have a breakup, uh, that teaches you a lot of things. How to deal with yourself, how to deal with a counterpart, how to take life, how to handle life. That is not an easy thing when I have dealt with Many youngsters going through breakup and patchup, and that is a kind of an emotional trauma and emotional instability. And uh, that is the time you you have to take it positively. Every person has both the sides, the positive and the negative. How much you get from the person, and how much you give the person, how much you receive from the person, and how much uh, it's it it has to be vice versa. But yes, every time, every moment, every person, every situation teaches you get the best 
midst of the learning process, it might be a blessing or it might be a lesson. But at the end of the day, it is your life. You have to handle it. You are responsible for it. And you have to take uh, get out of the crisis moment. So this is all about you stress. Take stress in a positive way, however traumatic it might be. About the mixed feelings, we have another question on that note. Is judging yes. myself before talking to friends or putting a message in a class group, shivering when I have to speak in front of a crowd, overthinking before wearing clothes, all considered to be anxiety? Should I take it seriously or am I just an introverted person? Uh, very rightly said, I could relate with this question because I had gone through it uh, several times in my school days. Uh, as I have said, I'm from St. Joseph Gopal, but yes, I was an introvert girl, very conscious, very uh, uh, rest I restricted myself, but I could very much relate because yes, uh, 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 we take it as an introvert because when I was 30 years down the line, like uh, in my career, it has been 30 years, but prior to that, when I was in school, Probably there was nobody to help me out, nobody to support me, nobody to understand me. But right now, when you are putting this question before me, I could so much relate that there are many platforms, many people, many faculties, many uh, uh, students who are understanding it. We are talking about it. Uh, I'm talking about my time when I, I could, could not seek help from any sector. It was only my family who used to help me out. And uh, probably uh, they were the person who were the biggest uh, support system for me and therefore every step that I, that I could handle in my life it was because of their support system but today in this uh, uh, generation I feel it is not only the introvert that needs to be recognized but it is uh, an uh, alarm signal that you need to handle it very uh, uh, very carefully and you need to uh, feel that it is not only the introvert quality of an individual that we can handle we can cope up but it is uh, the kind of the support system that we try to create and we try to seek and if we get a uh, see uh, we always it has been taught to us in social studies book i still remember man is a social animal wherever we are in the family in a personal life in the academic situation in the college life or in the professional life in the social life when we mingle with the people uh, the most important thing is to understand that in wherever we are, we are in a team of people. And if in the team, if we are not being accepted, acknowledged, it's very humiliating. It's very insulting. It is very disgraceful. The most important thing is to understand if you want respect, you need to give respect. But if you want love, you need to give love. That is That has to be taken care of very sincerely and very ethically is the most important thing uh, that when you are a part of a team you understand a person's potential but at the same time recognize a person's weaknesses and try to uh, segregate or try to designate a task that is being done by the proper person with the proper skill don't a fish cannot climb the tree and the monkey cannot swim in the water but both are very efficient in their own domain so you need to segregate we are human beings we are blessed with a beautiful brain and a beautiful heart if we are not able to discriminate and distinguish between those skills that has to be given to a right person right time to get the right result uh, we uh, only then we can be successful otherwise it is very difficult over to you amanda yes, ma'am now that you have shared and how you related to this question i feel like it's very important that people should come and be vocal about their experiences in the way it doesn't just help that person it also helps others realize that yes i'm not alone in this there are people like you, everyone went through so it's, it's really good that when you share this, I'm pretty sure our listeners have uh, related to it and they feel that they are not alone now. Moving ahead to the next question, is it okay to think uh, sometimes about what you want before thinking about what others want? Amanda, here I would like to put, yes, it is very okay. It is very good to think what you want because the problem with our society, the problem with our system is that we always are concerned what people say. Uh, how people will take us, how people think about it. 
but uh, we always are concerned what people will think but at the time of crisis no people come forward to help you out it is your journey it is your life you have to sort it out you have to uh, uh, go ahead with the crisis moment you have to take care of yourself so it is absolutely okay if you take it from your perspective rather from the others perspective because others will not be concerned about you others will probably help you not help you it, uh, as time comes we have seen the consequences uh, at the time of covid also we have gone through the pandemic has hit very badly everybody so you have to take your responsibility to get a positive result you cannot depend and expect somebody else to take your responsibility so it's all absolutely okay if you think from your perspective uh the next question is uh, anxiety and overthinking management in younger generation how to go about this uh that is the basic thing that i am uh, taking care of these days because yes anxiety and overthinking are always there because uh, always uh, it has been seen that whenever uh, there is some kind of equation and relationship it could be a parent child relationship or teacher student relationship peer relationship always when there is a relationship kind some kind of relationship there, there is a back and baggage of expectation landing up with it and if we are not able to justify ourselves and Uh, match with the expectation that we have it is going to be very disastrous so overthinking and anxiety is mainly how i take myself when i have to deal with somebody else it is easier to take myself in my way but it becomes really difficult to take myself as perspective to what my parents think about me what my peer pressures uh, uh, these are the different compartments and different sectors we need to segregate yes there are anxiety but if you take Take anxiety, uh, and you handle your anxiety. You are the best person to cope up with the anxiety uh, and overthinking. Why we to go into overthinking? It is only because the anxiety level makes us feel so disgusting that it it, it, it we land up in overthinking. What others will think if I get less marks? See, this is a time when uh, everybody is concerned about how much percentile you are getting because that makes a lot of difference in where you want to see yourself remember one thing as a psychologist i would request everybody who is listening to this uh, podcast today that do not judge your child do not judge your student do not judge your uh, any individual on grades marks percentile that has nothing to do with life okay every person is very unique every person is very beautiful every person has a certain intellectual level we all uh, consider ourselves with a normal iq level but if you are normal iq level it doesn't mean that you have to get the same marks 99.9 percentile is not acceptable for everybody it's not possible for everybody do not pressurize anybody or do not judge anybody even amongst the siblings i would request everybody to not please compare the child with some other person he has he or she has his own potential her own caliber her own strength and weaknesses and she is complete in her own way never try to judge her never try to discriminate her never try to compare her uh, and that makes a person go through anxiety and overthinking i might not be capable enough that should be removed from the dictionary of every person's life i am not capable whatever you are capable you do your best and uh, prove yourself you need not have to prove the world or you need not have to justify it you have to prove yourself and you know your strength you are the better person to to handle yourself and treat yourself Ma'am, very rightly said, this trend is still going on about like comparing your marks and judging someone on the on that basis. And on that note, we have a question like when you mentioned that you are enough. Uh, a question has arisen: How do I convince myself that I am enough? A very beautifully stated statement: I am enough. See, this is what since childhood a child should be nurtured with, a child should be trained with, a child should be handled with. Uh, every individual, every child, every person is unique, and every person is complete in a in in oneself. Okay, so whatever we are, the most important thing to make a person believe in, in yourself. You have to believe in yourself that you are the best and you are able to handle the situation. it might be a good bad or the worst situation but you are the right person god almighty has given you certain situation you have to uh, face a certain situation because you are capable of handling the situation okay and every person might handle the same situation differently and might get different result or might react in a different way so nothing in the book 
of dictionary of psychology it has been taught to us that nothing is correct or incorrect you have to believe in yourself and you have to give your best shot to get the best result or to uh, overcome with the best uh, coping strategy so you have to trust yourself you have to have a belief in yourself and you have to have full confidence in yourself that is the most important thing i would mention the terminology confidence that is lacking in our society that is lacking in our system since childhood like I, i'll give you a brief example amanda if you permit me during the time of covid we got connected online in this platform also uh, we are blessing every crisis comes with a blessing it's a blessing in disguise that we are getting connected online globally the world has become so small so every distress comes with a use stress problem comes with a solution trust me this is i'm telling by my own experience when almighty showers us with a problem he showers us with blessings also but we are so much engrossed in the problem that we overlook the solution but every problem comes with a solution only a perception towards the solution needs to be taken care of so i am enough only that could be understood when you have a belief in yourself you have a positivity in yourself you have uh, uh, you have you trust yourself the most important thing and you have the confidence to take care of yourself uh the next question is when i have a downcast mood and i feel like all hope is lost and feel like being alone should i listen to my mind and stay alone or should i seek company a very beautiful and very sensitive question that i see can every client that visit me uh Uh, the mind says something and the heart says something see uh, in, uh, in psychological technology terminology i would say it's the iq versus the eq iq intellectual level tells us this is good this is bad eq says this is good and this can be taken care of okay there is a difference between the uh, uh, the equation of iq and eq so it is very important to understand that every uh, uh, it, you have to maintain a balance between your reasoning skills understanding skills logical skills and between uh, your empathetic skills like if you are going through a crisis moment uh, how you take care of yourself like for example i'll give you a simple example understanding yourself at the time of crisis or uh, understanding if, if if you are landed up in a particular kind of a curriculum okay you have to read all these subjects you might like it you might not like it but you have to study all the subjects okay because on the basis of all the marks you will be given a particular grade but maybe it might be so that few of the subjects are of my liking i do might give my best few of the subject are i'll give you my example most importantly you get like when i was a student i i did not have any any liking for number okay i did not i used to hate maths so maths was my last priority so i used to never take it uh, always at the bottom of my priority list was maths then i started uh, understanding myself i started realizing that uh, if i have to get uh, the good marks in class because i uh, had always been topper i had to uh, i communicated with myself i spoke with myself i talked with myself i made myself i my my brain said it, it it is not your cup of tea my heart says you can do it my brain said you cannot do it my heart says i do it i do it i and i told to myself listen my dear heart and listen my dear brain it is my life you need to only help me not to judge me and therefore i focused and i started loving it i i started loving it though not, uh, maths was never uh, um, a liking subject but i started loving it the day i took it uh, most lovingly it became easier for me so anything and everything that comes in a uh, very difficult life or difficult moment or difficult situation or difficult person start loving that situation start loving that person and you will be reciprocate with the uh, with the feelings you give to that person or situation or time trust me it works it works with me it has worked with me it will definitely work with you my dear friends so mark the company like since you mentioned about max uh, not uh, being a subject that you were fond of back then yes. so you told yourself so in this question if like uh, the company you say sometimes if if not if we can't talk to ourselves and sort it by ourselves so who mm-hmm. would be the next like if not friends if like now people will be very hesitant to go and seek help professionally since it's still like a stigma like you are going to a psychologist so what is it terms will be put forth labels will be put forth so so how should uh, one overcome all that and seek help and what would be the best company if not we helping ourselves uh amanda first of all i would like to uh, put the 
a statement in a little twist statement and say uh, everybody who is listening who would be listening to this podcast i would request you that mental health is not a stigma it is not a barrier it is not it is as normal as any physical health okay Firstly, if you have a headache, you will definitely go to a doctor. If you have a fever, you will definitely visit a doctor, and it it is taken as a very normal thing. But when you feel that I am feeling low, I am feeling depressed, I am feeling uh, not comfortable, why don't you think and feel and uh, 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 take it seriously? That this is also a serious issue. Uh, so I would always suggest that take it. very seriously very sensitively and very gracefully it is also a part of your own system own uh, emotional uh, system should be taken very very positively but at all before going to the psychologists or professional help yes if you have somebody in your life i always ask people is there anybody in your life whom you are willing and you without any hesitation you can call at uh, midnight 2 o'clock 3 o'clock if you have somebody like that in your life you are a blessed person trust me you are a blessed person you are a loved person okay because everybody uh, needs to be connected emotionally we say that we all are busy god has given us ample amount of time during the pandemic because we are uh, uh, we are uh, like in a cage that is what has been told to me by my clients that ma'am uh, uh, it's very difficult to survive 24 hours with a loved one how could it be difficult to survive with 24 hours with the loved ones you call them as a, as your loved ones but how could it be difficult see you are getting a chance to be 24/7 with your loved ones but everybody needs a space everybody needs uh, uh, their own priorities own space so if you have somebody in your life who could be trustworthy who could give Uh, keep your feelings in a confidential zone who are confident enough to understand and uh, empathize with you go ahead but if you feel that there is nobody in your life who could be confident enough and uh, confidentiality with confidentiality is put, should be kept then i would definitely suggest that you should seek a professional help so uh, if you have somebody special in your life somebody if it could be your parents it could be your teachers it could be your friends it could be your loved ones it could be a special person it could be some one person at least a one person if you if you have somebody special in your life who is there to listen to you even in the odd hours even in the busy hours you are blessed but if you don't feel that you have anybody to understand you see uh, mental health professionals we are there to help you out go for a psychologist let me put it very specifically if you want to heal yourself go for a psychologist because if you go to a psychiatrist trust me you will be uh, getting medicines medicines to have side effects my dear friends so uh, without any side effects uh, yeah, we are going to help you out yes ma'am that is really helpful our next question is how to handle stress in this pandemic situation cannot be calm and patient and enjoying the day is not so e- easy this time very rightly said by amanda that is what had been experienced through the last uh, the last two years i have seen many people going through various kind of behavioral uh, disorders or behavioral uh, instability uh, because see uh, as you have rightly said pandemic uh, had covid 19 has hit every big purpose persons like so many people have lost their job so many people did not get their salary but their responsibility is there people are there in the family who needs to be taken care of there are so many ailing people in the family elderly people in the family who needs medical aid who needs support system financial instability as it has been rightly said life is so unpredictable you never know what crisis is going to uh, crop up at what time and pandemic is a very very uh, evident example uh, that we are still going on in spite of vaccination in spite of everything people are still going through certain amount of uh, 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 uncertainties uh, and therefore there are so kind so many a distressful situation or stressful situation cropping up the most important thing is uh, recognizing see accepting the problem accepting the problem is the first step towards recovery as i have told you just a couple of seconds back that if you accept that we have to live with this and there is uh, uh, we don't know when we are going to be out of it then if you are able to realize 
person accept it becomes a little easier to uh, to uh, to heal from it to heal uh, and talk about it and experience it and uh, take it in a positive way for example there are many people who lost their loved ones but that is the reality that is the reality that they have lost their loved ones what next is that many people lost their job many people do not have any salary they don't have any kind of financial securities and they have so much of uh, uh, uncertainty is there but yes definitely people doesn't know we are connected online how long how the uh, nature of examination would be how would be the placement things uh, people who are in the final year in every uh, going from graduation to post graduation post graduation to the next step of placement nobody knows what is stored in in their destiny or in their life so there is still so much of uncertainty trust me my dear friends at this time it take it take it as a challenge it is a challenge where you need to think accept this is the need of an art to accept the situation be very calm composed and then react to the situation if you when any uh, crisis moment not sat there to we always fall in trap of giving reaction please this would have to be my humble suggestion that do not give reaction instantly remain calm because the situation is not going to vanish or disappear so easily but by giving reaction you are creating a panic in your own self you are creating a panic among the people around you in the environment so remain calm compose accept the situation and think about it how to deal with it we cannot delete it from our life we have to deal with it and accept it and get ahead in it we cannot stuck ourselves in a particular situation we need to un- accept the situation and uh, we need to sort it out very efficiently properly uh, i would i would uh, suggest you uh, always always that i do for myself that, and it is helpful for me meditate at least uh, 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes one hour whatever could be your capacity to begin with 10 minutes and start the, your schedule uh, with a meditation meditation is not that you need to be religiously or spiritually connected but yes meditation is you connect with yourself think and connect with your inner self how how do you feel how do i take it how do i uh, uh, take every step in my life without giving reaction or give, uh, without treating myself disgracefully so meditation helps me a lot i do meditation every day morning and evening for an hour and it tremendously makes me very very uh, physically fit mentally alert and emotionally connected this is my mantra and it works for me my dear friend uh, it will definitely help you out it is not that difficult and it could be very helpful thank you ma'am for providing the ways with with which we can cope our stress and our anxiety the next question is about the emotion that uh, i feel like many people have trouble in controlling that is anger what are the best ways to control anger uh yes that is the most important thing that i see in the younger generation uh, probably in every every human being emotion is a uh, uh, anger is an emotion it's a very normal emotion but where you draw a line and where you let others cross the line depends on you yourself how you handle your anger issues uh, that is a simple emotion anger is an emotion but where it is required how much it is required what is the intensity that is uh, uh, that needs to be taken care and uh, therefore in the last question i told giving reaction anger is nothing but giving reaction if you give reaction in a wrong way to a wrong person in a wrong uh, situation you get a wrong result but if you give the same thing that's that uh, uh, same reaction if it is taken in a positive way stress anger gives stress is induced by anger or it could be reciprocal okay so reacting in a wrong way to a wrong person or situation gives a wrong direction or a wrong consequences but reaction to a person or a situation or a time in a positive way creates a kind of giving confidence and giving discipline in your life so anger is nothing but an emotion taken in a right way giving 
a right result, taking in a wrong way, giving a wrong result. Uh, a simple example I'll tell you of um, technology. Like everybody, every child is having a smart phone in hand, okay, because everybody's connected online to, for education, for uh, school, college, uh, uh, professional, everybody's having a smartphone. They are connected with a smartphone. But every parents are concerned and they talk to me that my child is 24 7 uh, attached to this device called a smartphone so that creates a lot of anger issue for the parents also for the children the parents say the children why they are connected with a smartphone and they they try to retaliate or revolt the children says that yes we don't have a choice we have to connect online and therefore this is required but the child the parents are concerned what the child is doing is it 24 7 required to be with a smartphone here comes the anger issue the other anger issue comes with the inter adolescent age or when there is a change in the metabolic system but there is a proper way of channelizing your anger, channelizing your uh, uh, your reaction to the situation. So that needs to be taken care. That needs to be understood. That needs to be focused and that needs to be vocal. Channelizing your energy in a positive way gives positive anger. It, it might uh, sound very weird. How could up anger be positive? Anger is not positive or negative. Anger is nothing but giving you reaction to the situation or to the person. So if you give a positive reaction that is required with firm determination, commitments, uh, sincerity and uh, discipline, it becomes a positive anger. Anger is not, uh, why I, I cannot understand why anger is always like stress, similarly like anger, it is always taken with a negative connotation, but anger and stress can be taken with a positive because I deal with people who are with uh, behavioral disorders and with lots of insecurities and instabilities, but I, I, I always handle these things with lots of empathy, with lots of compose, without giving any kind of reaction to uh, the situation. I take the person in confidence and it can be taken care of very easily, very calmly. So my dear friends, stress and anger are not negative connotation. It can be taken as a positive connotation by channelizing your energy and your reaction in a positive direction and in a proper way. Yes, ma'am. It's really fascinating to know that we can even channel our anger in a positive way. There's a positive side to that too. So thank you for throwing light to that. The next question is, how do I know I have a mental problem? Are there ways in which a student can men, uh, manage their mental health? Is self-diagnosis okay if one resonates with symptoms? And what are the benefits of taking therapy? Yeah. Are there ways in which the student can manage mental health? Yes, there are various ways by which a student can manage mental health. First way is that first uh, step, I would say, Acknowledge your mental health. Recognize your mental health. Accept that you're going through some kind of uh, uh, trauma. It could be trauma, it could be insecurity, it could be uncertainty, it could be stress, it could be anger, it could be frustration, it could be depression, it could be low feeling, it could be something that it needs to be validated, something that needs to be acknowledged, something needs to be accepted. Number one, if you have uh, somebody around you who is there to help you out, you are brilliant, you are blessed. But is self-diagnosis okay if one resonates with the symptoms yes definitely it is okay if you resonate with the situation self-diagnosis is the best way of getting yourself uh, understanding yes i have some problem because most of the time amanda i've seen that people go through various kinds of problem but they are not able to accept because the system doesn't allow them to uh, accept the fact for example simple thing if i'm going through some kind of um uh, some kind of stress uh, or anxiety but uh, if a person tries to speak about stress or anxiety the people around the family itself will say uh, this is a normal thing so uh, it, it, it is for a short time and you will overcome it but the person is suffering inside out because of that stress because of that anxiety and the uh, and might be it lands up into depression also so if a person himself or herself recognize and diagnose that something is wrong with himself and herself the number one thing is self-diagnosis yes you need to be talking about it you need to be expressive about it you need to communicate about uh, about the uh, symptoms and situations and you need to be vocal about it number three that you have asked me is that what are the benefits uh, taking the therapy that is what i guess uh, amanda if i'm mistaken Yes, is self-diagnosis okay? Yes. yes. If one, uh, yes. Uh, what are the benefits of taking therapy? Number one, 
see the most important thing the benefits of taking therapy is you get a platform you get a professional platform where you can open up your heart and soul number two your unconscious mind see i would uh, i would share about uh, here a small thing there is a technique called johari window johari window is nothing but every individual is uh, divided or in every individual has four quadrangle four quadrangle means your personality has four four different sectors number one sector is the open self the open self means how much i know about myself and how much i let other people know me okay so if i am comfortable i know about myself but how much other people know about me uh, is a comfort zone only people who knows me will be able to know about me otherwise how could other people know about me okay this is the first part of your personality the second part is the blind self blind self means there might be certain things i am not aware of i am not familiar with there might be my family my friends my teachers my uh, by some uh, close friends will be able to means blind self means there has to be somebody in your life who is a best critic for it for me my parents were my best critic who used to always tell me this is right for you this is wrong for you and uh, uh, this is your life you are the better person to choose your life in the way you want but yes this could be a better part of yourself for example let me put it I'll give you my example example so i i i had learned various things like i have learned a guitar i have learned kathak i have learned uh, vocal music but these were not of my choice but it it was told to my by me my, my parents that this you are good in this so my friends used to say you can take it as a career which i was never inclined with but i never i thought that it is not going to harm me so why not go ahead with me the third self is the hidden self the hidden self is the most important self wherein we psychologists try to hit the hidden self like there are certain painful traumatic negative side of our personality that we hide from ourselves also and we hide from the other person also and we do not talk about it we are not communicative about it we do not express about it because those are the things that are very painful traumatic pathetic Uh, very very hurting insulting disgraceful so we don't talk about it so with everybody including me including me i'm also a normal human being so i therefore i diagnose myself very easily as much as i talk to diagnose my client also so you have to take uh, uh, a better if you want to seek a better version of yourself or when you are going through some kind of behavioral uh, disturbances or insecurities or uh, some kind of trauma some kind of frustration some kind of uh, depression it is always required to go to a psychiatrist sorry not a psychiatrist for a, uh, only for the medicine for a psychologist who is going to help you out to get your hidden self to the conscious level the unconscious mind is brought to the conscious level and you need to declutter those things that are hurting you those are painful those are disturbing those are creating kind of a mess in your life so it is very essential it is very important it is very um, significant that you need to talk about it and who could you talk when you get a confidence and confidential platform where you can open up you cannot open up your heart and soul for any any random person so you need to have a proper uh, professional platform a significant platform who are there to help you out scientifically technically empathetically and more professionally yes ma and coming to our final question the question with which we started our episode uh the question with which what your article is based on let's not stigmatize mental health the question is talking about mental health is a stigma in indian society how does one deal and get a support system uh amanda i always uh, uh, i'm very very uh, uh, vocal person so far as mental health is concerned because uh, i always i request wherever i get the chance to speak to whatever audience i connect because i am with the police force uh, i i i deal with many kind of uh, uh, different sectors of people i deal with the corporates i deal with the public sector private sector i deal with the students uh, i deal with even criminals so let me put it for, uh, before uh, that mental health is something that is should be recognized in educational institution uh, and it should be given uh, every individual should be given a chance to speak and talk if a person is going through some kind of uh, uncomfort uh, 
situation un uncomfort zone and uh, the most important thing is that i would request everybody who is listening to this podcast that do not res uh, hesitate in opening up your true self do not try to um, create a kind of artificial mode of life express yourself expose yourself and embrace yourself in the way you are nobody is going to judge you nobody is going to put you in the framework and if there is somebody who is judging you the problem is not with you it's the problem with the person who is judging you so uh, anybody if you feel that you, you to, if you're talking to somebody and you are not feeling comfortable talking comfortable working comfortable comfortable expressing that is not the problem with you it is the problem with the system that we needs to work with and that i would request everybody today that let this mental health not be celebrated only on 10th of october every year globally let us celebrate it every day every moment and every individual should embrace it very gracefully and very in a very dignified way way so that every smallest problem that we face in our life is being wholeheartedly welcomed and every person has somebody to listen and somebody to acknowledge somebody to show a support system only then the stigma of mental health from india can be eradicated like polio or like any other uh, disease so it is should be taken care of, not as a disease but as a normal behavioral symptoms and it should be acknowledged in a very dignified way and people should be uh, supported and people should be given uh, full dignity and respect if a person talk about himself without any kind of justification or any kind of uh, uh, inhibitions rightly said ma'am it's very important that each of us address it be vocal about it and prioritize our mental health it's equally important when we are taking consideration of our physical health it's equally important to keep our mental health also as a priority with that we have come to the end of the session on mental health with dr sharmishta gupta thank you ma'am for giving your valuable time and taking us through on what mental health is i'm sure our listeners have benefited from this talk and have got an in-depth understanding in the subject those who want to gain more understanding in the subject can sign up for the psychology internship and training program conducted by dr sharmishta gupta the link for the same will be put in the description thank you all for listening to microfiles podcast if you like what you just heard we hope that you all will share this episode with others for more information regarding our upcoming episode do visit our instagram page and subscribe to our YouTube channel the handles for which will be put in the description thank you so much amanda for giving me this opportunity i would like to thank each and every member of your team who has taken this as an important part of college and thank you st joseph's college bangalore for giving me this opportunity thank you so much